Hello and welcome to the Behind the Beat podcast with me, Katie Russell from Planet Drum Music School in London. Join us as we talk to special guests and industry professionals about all things music. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Behind the Beat podcast with me, Katie. We are joined with the Planet Drum founder, Alain Morel, and we are joined by Planet Drum teacher, Filippo. Filippo has Hello. been with us for quite a while now, quite a few years, and um, you do you do lots of gigs in London, so I really want to pick your brains on that. Um, you're a very experienced musician um, and you're an excellent teacher. So just for anyone watching, just a little bit about Filippo, um, and we're just going to dive straight into it um so how did you first get into drumming to start with yeah okay that's a difficult question to answer so i literally i'm honest i don't remember <laughs> all i know it's my mom telling me that when i was three or four i started playing on pots okay pools spoons and i will have destroyed like a couple every week that's what she always told me then when I was six, I started getting, you know, lessons every week. And then that just kept going very naturally. And okay. um, the only person I can blame is probably my grandpa. Because he, he wasn't a musician, but he used to tap constantly. And actually he used to do drummers things without being a drummer. So that's all I can recall. But that's it really. So there, there isn't a specific reason why. There wasn't a specific, this is when it started, but it sounded like you started from quite a young age. Yeah. And so what, young, what, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so like you don't remember. And what but, were your lessons like? Do you remember enjoying them as a kid? So that, that's a, that, that's a good question. I'm, my, my first teacher was a good teacher in terms of what he taught me, but he wasn't a good teacher in terms of um, the way he managed the lesson. Okay. For real, like in, in half an hour less than 10 minutes would have been on the phone. And I'm not kidding about this. Right. Wow. I was just too little to complain about it. But, the, but at the end of the day, the lessons were actually good. Then I changed drum teacher after three years because this issue came out actually. Oh. But the lessons were good. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. And that, that, I mean, that didn't put you off as well. I think from kids from such a young age. Um, yeah you, you could get distracted easily you want to try and do something else so the fact that you still stuck with it for three years even though they weren't the best um yeah shows right. that you you kind of you did really like drumming which is good yeah 100 percent was instinctive somehow so yeah amazing um a little bit of a curveball question now um who is your inspiration slash if you could have a lesson with anybody oh god dead or alive who would it be? That's a very difficult question. Um, yeah. I mean, so what are my inspirations people. in general? That's yeah, okay. your, your inspiration in general. And then if you were to have a lesson with someone. Yeah. So inspiration is, you know, it's something that changes over time. So my answer now, it's something then in tomorrow morning is something else. So I, let's say in chronological order, since I started drums, I would say, um, you know, John Bonham from Led Zeppelin, Phil Collins from Genesis. My mom, my mom and my dad were into prog rock, hard rock. So all those drummers, really. Then I'm moving to heavy metal, believe it or not. So all the drummers, classic heavy metal drummers from Iron Maiden to Dream Theater right, were my inspirations. Then I moved into jazz. So yes. Tony Williams, Buddy Rich, Hart Blakey. So all the classic drummers are my inspirations. Basically. Yes. I just changed over time. Yeah. And um, right now, um, I, I will say Brian Blade. which is a contemporary jazz drama. And he plays in a way that no one else's plays like. So I will have a lesson with him. Yeah. Or even a chat, you know, just chatting to these people can be mm -hmm. enough for a year time, you know, just learn. Yes. Stuff. But you, you again, if you ask me tomorrow morning, I mean... It will be different, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%.
You sort of say he plays in a style that's kind of different to everyone else. Like, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, it's um, the way it could be even a jazz standard or a song or composition many other people play. Um, the interpretation, the sounds, the way you play changes. It's, it's the same for singers, right? Or any other yeah. instrument. Like the same song sung by different singers can actually be an amazing song or a terrible song. Yes. Yeah. Happening the music, even, you know, sometimes you don't like a song, then there's a cover and you're like, oh, that, that's an amazing tune. Yes. So that, that, that's the reason why. Yeah, he's got amazing uh, body language, Brian Blake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like he's, uh, the way he's moving, it just uh, makes the music, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's very earthy. I don't have to explain. He's very, and he's ex- Stream with the dynamics as well. I so saw him in Ronnie's, and when he was going for it, the whole drum kit was moving almost off the stage. He had to pull it back. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that. It's amazing. Love that. Yeah, yeah. It's like... So you, um, I mean, we, we talk semi-regularly because we both teach at Planet Drum, um, and you're often telling me of gigs that you're doing. Um, so you gig quite frequently, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone, maybe a potential student or uh, someone learning the drums, um, that would like to at some point start getting gigs in and around London? Like, how does one approach getting that and starting on in the you know the gig circuit? Mm. That's, that's a difficult question. Yeah, I'm sure there's not one way to do it either. No, exactly, but. exactly. There, there, there's no a way. So first of all, it depends by the genre you play. Okay. So if you play jazz, you go straight to jam sessions. And literally, if you like a player or the player likes you, or either way, you you know have a, straight away a relationship. Like You can even become friends straight away or create a connection. And based on that, you start rehearsing or even go straight to the gig. So in the jazz world, it's great. There is this platform. Um, same for <laughs> blues, really. There are blues yeah. jam sessions, funk, the same. So most of the instrumental music or let's say, yeah, jazz, blues and funk, you go to jam sessions. For rock and pop, it's a bit more difficult. So you literally need to know a singer, or a producer, or either way. And it, it, I mean, in London, there's lots of open mics gigs. I don't know if you've ever been to open mics gigs, and I, I don't want to sound bad, but sometimes there are also terrible gigs. Yeah. But then there's also sometimes between 20 singers, there's one singer is amazing. So you literally need to go there and be like, hey, I'm a drummer, and if you need me, is my okay. number. Okay. So, I mean, and in any case, either way, even if it's jazz or pop, you need to introduce yourself. That Yes. And yeah. it's going to jam sessions and open mic nights. Open um, mics or I don't know if there are events, festivals. So it's it's still that. very much in person as opposed to Yeah, I don't, I, don't believe in, I don't believe much in the online thing. Obviously, Instagram helps a lot, but you need to have met some people. Obviously, if you go to uni, if you do a degree, then that's it, that you create your own. Um, platform and contacts and that's even better than gym sessions because you meet hundreds of musicians you know if you go to college or whatever yeah well so if yeah you, if you meet uh, if you meet people at a jam session let's say what is going to make them call you for a rehearsal you know what attribute should a jazz drummer have in terms of you know being able to get good gigs well I, f- I think everyone's going to give you a different answer, probably, but um, for, for sure, it, it, I mean, very often it's not even about the playing. I mean, obviously, you need to have a certain standard, so you need to have a good time. That's good what I'm timing. talking about, yeah. Time. I mean, good timing, good sound, and even more important, you need to know the tunes. The tunes, okay. so If out of 10 tunes, you know nine tunes, they're going to go, I want this guy on the gig, so he doesn't need to practice in a rehearsal room. Yeah, you're kind of reliable because you already know a lot of them. Exactly. So reliable, but then you need also to be a nice person. If you're not a nice person, you don't get kicks physically, which is mm-hmm. fair enough, yeah. you know. And, and yeah. unless you are a an absolute monster on your instrument, then sometimes 
even if you're not a nice person, get the gig anyway. <laughs> that was actually going to be a bit of a, a question later on, um, but I might as well ask it now, was how do you deal with conflict among, amongst like band members or uh, people that you're working with? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, that didn't happen too many times. Okay. And I, I don't even remember the last time I had conflict with someone, to be honest. Um, usually it's a band leader or don't take it personal or a singer, basically. I'm usually, offended. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, if it's not resolvable, if you cannot sort it out, I just get out of the way. I, I would rather not play with this person. If, if this person is doing something, let's call it abusive, you know what I mean? If you know what I mean, like... If like, there's no resolution. Know, like okay, the gig is cancelled. I won't pay the cancel the, the cancellation fee, for example. That that wouldn't be fair. So if you don't want to sort it out, nice one. <laughs> I'm gonna go out basically. Yeah. So I, I try always to go for the best personally. But if the other person has a big ego and doesn't want to sort out things, I, I just take the, the door and I I go I go basically. Yeah. I, I would rather not be in presence of people I don't like, basically. Yeah, yeah. Unless yeah. the gig is in Wembley Stadium, then I can shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's but good. Otherwise, I tend to yeah, just... Just not put yourself in it and around it too much. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about your most memorable gig slash performance? Um, could be for any reason. Could be for a good reason could be for a bad reason is there one that sticks out um in any way at all and why that's a difficult question as well because you are making me all the questions that if you ask me again tomorrow it'll be different be yeah yeah because now i'm gonna remember recent stuff yes. while maybe something i did as a kid will be even more you know yes yeah cool. um I mean, for sure, it was a great gig. Um, I did last last year. I played at, at Love Supreme. I don't know if you know this festival. Yes, it's down nearby Brighton, sort of, and it's a jazz festival. But it's amazing seeing thousands of people. Literally, st it was like a rock concert. Yeah, in a jazz con context. It, it wasn't traditional jazz. It was, let's say, more modern, edgy. It was amazing playing that sort of almost for our jazz in front of all those people in almost like a rock concert vibe, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Something we experience because usually jazz clubs is more, you know how it is. Like it's quite intimate, people. right? So again? Is it probably quite smaller and intimate if you're doing Yeah, ex exactly. Gigs? Exactly. That's how it works. But actually that was two worlds, two, two different worlds together. And that I found it amazing how it can work actually. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, that that's something. Oh, has nice! That was a nice one. Done, uh, yeah, is it happening this year as well. It's again, is it happening again? Uh, well, not in that format. Not in that format. I mean, yeah, yes, I had other jazz gigs, but they were more. No, I mean the uh, uh, the Love Supreme Festival. Is it happening? No, again? I mean no. They didn't book me again. It's happening again, but I'm not playing. No, but it's happening again. The festival is actually happening. Uh, the festival itself, yes, it, it is. Yeah. It is, it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't remember who's playing. I've seen the, the thing advertisement. Okay. So there Which you I go. Love Supreme. Play. Anyone playing needs a drummer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but check it out. Usually there's nice stuff happening. Yeah. Nice. Um, oh, another horrible question. Sorry, I've got another horrible one. Um, how... Do you think your students would describe you? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> it is like a therapy session. Yeah, I yeah, know. It's like a self-reflecting. I uh, know. Sorry. <laughs> then, um, I don't know. I think I'm a pretty... I, I think, so right. I'm not saying I am. I think yeah. they would say that I am an, an active person. So in, you know, in 15 minutes lesson, we, we, obviously we chat at the beginning, but then we do different things and we play for 40 minutes. 
So I'm, I'm sure they would say I'm very active and I'm really passionate about it. Mm. Yeah. And I think they would say that I really try to transmit more than just playing technically the instrument. Mm. Also, because if you think about it, te technically you can, maybe not perfectly, but you can learn it from YouTube somehow. Mm. But I try to give something more. So, you know, either the context of what they're playing, the style, uh, if you're in a gig, that's what will happen. If you're in a gig, you, you fuck the book, don't use the book, use your ears. So I think they will say that I'm, I'm really, really, really passionate and I try to transmit that. Or yes. at least I hope so. Yes. And if they don't, it's fine. Just don't let me know. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. What What would you sort of say? Um, because at Planet Drum, we run like band workshops and we have concert rehearsals because we have a concert twice a year. Um, how do you sort of get around someone that wants to have a go at playing, but they're quite shy or quite nervous to play with other people or in front of other people? Yeah, um, I mean, that's I, quite a common thing. Isn't yeah, it? I, I don't think there's much way around it. I mean, I just tell them, I, I, I literally tell them the truth. I'm like, the guys who run the workshop, as in you and Vlad and Peter, are nice people, are really relaxed. There's no judgment. <laughs> they are afraid of judgment, which is fair enough. If I will have to play the piano in front of people, I will be afraid of being judged, make mistakes. Yes lose the form, whatever, you, need, you know. So just tell them that actually the practice, the band practice to practice what they are not yet confident with. So by practicing, you become confident. Yeah. Uh, some people are naturally confident, but I think you don't earn confidence on your own, you just earn confidence with yeah. experience. Yeah, but practice I mean, makes progress, right, doesn't it? So, so I just tell them, well, what, what, I, so what I trick them into, I just say, look, just go and don't play at all. Just look. And, and then, then obviously they get, they get coaxed into playing. And then, and then <laughs> once they're, anyway, they play because everyone is playing and then they find out that it's not the end of the world. And then they keep. Yeah. Playing. It's quite a small group as well. It's not um, like there's exactly. a hundred people there. There's because I've done workshops eight, where maybe exactly. they ask you to play in front of 20 people. And it's even quite nerve wracking. People, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, maybe 20 musicians, it doesn't matter the level, they're all looking at you. So they can be... Yeah, and I, I, I had that quite recently as well. So went to a singing workshop with maybe 20 other singers and the mm. level was really good. Um, and the person leading the workshop would like pick on you and be like, all right, you, you sing this, you sing this. And like, I was absolutely terrified. And I was like, wow, yeah, I, I really feel, <laughs> I really feel, um, I can relate to what some people probably feel like coming to the band workshops, but it's okay. We don't pick on people. So it's fine. Yeah. Uh, but that was the first time I'd experienced that. And, you know, I'm quite well experienced. So, and I was like, oh gosh, this is quite yeah, become scary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but like again, people don't have to play. Um, and something I would say as well is um, play something simple to start yeah. with and just do it well. You don't uh, try and bite off more than exactly. you can chew. That's why I tell them. They tell, do it well. they tell me, this is not enough. And, and I'm like, you're playing a groove is correct and you can play for three minutes. That's more than enough, trust me. That's yes. what we do is at the end of the day. So if you can do that. That, that's enough actually there are drummers they struggle to do that so just go and do that it's yes it's more than enough so yeah and even just trying to play something like you said not looking at the book not looking yeah. at the sheet music just keeping it simple and but just another skill is, is watching other people yeah exactly exactly I, I, I always i always tell them it's like learning a language right so in, in the drum lesson you learn the grammar in the band practice you learn it's like talking, speaking that language and practicing that language. Yeah, like like hand signals and stuff when you're playing, you'll be like, yeah. oh, let's go around again, let's go around again, or um, eye contact to say, okay, right, we're going to end it here or whatever. Um, so you have to pick up on those whilst you're playing. Yeah, it's a different muscle memory, which you need to develop, by developing only yeah. by playing with and people. It, and it's good for your practice because once you play with people you, you and you go back to the practice kit and you know and you start practicing, you actually have a different attitude to practice yeah. because you, you understand the goal of it. 
exactly. better. You know, it's not just being in your bedroom, you know, and it's really about making certain things sound really good. So let's say, you know, the balance between hi-hat, bass drum and snare drum, yeah. the time, you know, and, and how good it feels, you know, and all that stuff, which you can only hear really when, when, when you're with people and, and people give you feedback as well. And they tell you, oh, that was great. Or, or they could say, you know, your timing was a little bit out in the chorus, you sped up. Can you sort yeah. it out? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Because also playing with the backing track, I mean, it's good for practice purposes, but the, the, the dynamics are not real and the, the backing track is not reacting to you. We, we are reacting to a backing track. So yeah. It's a um, one way system. So it's, it's yeah. not the same, basically. That, that, how, that is me. how important do you think being able to start learning and being comfortable with improvising is as a gigging musician? Um, I mean, it, it's very important. Even if you, I, I mean, I think different people will give you a different answer. But even if you have a pop gig, like pop gig where you play exactly the same things every night, same drum feel, same. Mm -hmm. I, I, I still think it's important. Maybe not in that context, maybe not much for the gig, but even for the rehearsals is extremely important because in rehearsals, you may be, maybe you learn the song, you play the song, the singer goes, oh, we're changing this and that. The style is slightly different. The dynamics are different. I want you more to sound like that. Well, then, then you need to improvise and, and make something up. So. Mm. And I'm not even talking about jazz, I'm talking about pop. So yes. even in that case, you need to be creative enough to uh, be able to improvise in real time. So for the purpose of uh, our students to understand better, how would you describe the difference between playing uh, improvised jazz music, let's say, and playing um, a straight pop gig? I mean, what what, what is the ingredients that make up jazz drumming oh god um That's question yeah, yeah yeah you can write an essay about it oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um i mean the, the so i mean the it, I, I think music is about purpose so the purpose is different obviously in both cases the, your purpose is to keep the rhythm and, and that's fair enough but in pop as well as as in jazz but especially in pop our role is just to serve the singer so we are there for the singer so we need to do everything in order to make the song run but not be in the way we cannot so if you're doing way. a jazz sorry to interrupt but if you're doing a jazz gig with a sing a jazz singer is that going to be different um well there's a gray zone so you still need to serve the music you still need to serve the singer but then there's a space a moment and a place where you can express yourself and for example when you play with a singer you have a, A, B, A, and then you have solos, and then you have A, A, B, A. A, A, B, A is the form of a song. Yeah? Sorry, it's the form. So let's say yes, you have verse, verse, chorus, verse. Right. Improvisation, period, solos, and then ending, you play again the same form. When yeah. you play the solos, you serve the players, you support them, but the way you support them is happening there in real time, and you don't know where these guys are going to go. So that's where you express yourself. Obviously, you're still, you're not overkilling the music. You need to still make the music happen. We have the freedom to go left, right, up, down. You don't know where you're going to go, really. Mm -hmm. But so that's why being yeah. able to improvise is really important. Yeah. You don't know where they're going to go and take and their solos. And obviously, there are type of jets where the improvisation is, is freer or is more limited or very limited, but still what changes is you react in real time to something that happens in real time and it hasn't been pre-planned. The, the, impro the improvisation is really on different levels because you've also got like the form improvisation where you could play a section more times than it was played the, the gig before. So you could repeat a section because you you keep playing it, you, you keep yeah. improvising it. And then you got the improvisation at the... Uh, solo level, which is basically you know, the instrumentist level, where you yeah. can, you, can, you play basically according to the, the style of, of the song. Yeah, so you go, it's on different levels improvisation, isn't it? It's more, there is a collective thing, and there is yeah. also uh, 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 an individual thing, right? Yeah. Plus improvisation, I don't think is either even black or white. You know, 
there's a gray area as in if you listen different jazz albums some are actually more rehearsed and arranged and actually are actually completely free sometimes there's no form sometimes there's a form sometimes they lose the form so it's sometimes the change style like if you listen to footprints which in jazz world everyone knows footprints if you listen to miles davis one they, they go from a three four to swing to, to straight to latin to whatever they change the, everything happens so yeah you can improvise at different levels but it, it's a is that the conversation we should have with other 10 drummers and see what they say you know yes I mean? yeah i think it's something i tell my students when uh we're, we're trying to do a little bit of improvisation is i think just to start with is being able to improvise um and go with the flow if something goes wrong so a lot of my students were doing pop rock and theater so it's kind of pretty rigid like there's not much scope for improvising but it's if you're in even in our concert rehearsals in our band workshop it's being able to not panic if yeah. something goes wrong so if they play an, an extra eight bars or an extra verse or something it's not it's having the ability to not just be like oh stop the song that's wrong it's just rolling with it basically rolling with it yeah and because there's no perfect performance um i don't i've never done a performance that goes perfectly there's always something but the audience won't know that but you know that there's and it but it's your ability yeah. to roll with it and to go with the flow and to not show that like oh, okay this is taking a different direction all right we're doing an extra verse or whatever yeah. or the chorus we just got to go with it um it's i think that's the that, first layer isn't it and then exactly. and then you and can get creative in, yeah and that comes with as i said before it comes with experience you know yeah. and i was talking before it's like talking a different language but if you think about it, when you learn a language like a second language you learn the grammar then you learn the vocabulary and then you need to start talking. And when you talk, you're actually improvising. Like right now we are improvising. So and you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. In my second language all the time, but <laughs> on, the, on the instrument is the same. Yeah. So, and the funny thing is that I think it was shorter said it, but that you cannot practice improvisation. And that's true. You can practice elements of it. Can practice, um, I don't know, coordination, fields, chops, whatever you want. But then you cannot practice what you're going to do in the moment. Mm. So, as you said, in the, in the you, moment, it's in the moment. Yeah. So when you when you make a mistake, you shouldn't react. And the yes. only way to not react is to actually not care about it. But we all care about it. Yes. That's why we react. I think but the amount the amount of people I've sort of seen um in lessons and in workshops and stuff and i used to be really guilty of doing this as well is when you've made a mistake they pull a face like Ugh! and then it's like you know if they've made a mistake but you yeah. wouldn't really have known if they hadn't pulled the face <laughs> yeah so, so i think that's a big one as well is to not look like it's gone wrong <laughs> yeah so it doesn't make a face as well but it's to acknowledge the other musicians that yes. they know what's happening yes so it's like it's like i was to say it's all good I know I fucked up, but let's keep going. Yes, yeah. Uh, there's a book, maybe you know it, Effortless Mastery by Kearney Werner. I'll check it out. It's amazing. It, it's okay. about... Can you send us the link to it? Yes. It's about this um, topic. Okay. And it's, it's very therapeutic. I mean, it's actually, it's actually like a psychological approach to it. But literally, the point of the book is to not care about what you do. So obviously he says you need to reach a standard technique, standard knowledge of the instrument so that you can stop. You don't need to be a beast on any animal. It's just a very standard level. And it's all about stop caring, basically. He says the moment you stop caring, it starts sounding amazing. Yeah. It doesn't even I, matter if you're technical. I think that's very true. I think that's very true. I think yeah, um, no. with... Uh, with singing it's very personal um, like if you sing a wrong note it feels really personal because it, it's coming from you you're producing the sound so I think yeah. a lot of people they care too much and it's you know they'll sing something and um, or, or play something and um, they're sort of judging themselves in their own head yeah and exactly. it's actually just let that go yeah. and you know these rooms are soundproof this is a safe space just try it and 
I just sent you the link, by the way. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Um, we'll share that around. Um, yeah, just have the, you need to just make sure you're in a space that you feel safe, that you can just try it and just see what happens because some good, some things really good can come out of yeah. that. Yeah. And well, you know, one of the exercises of the book is actually to brainwash yourself with mistakes. It's really, really fine. So he's a pianist. So he starts playing wrong notes until, wrong, no, I mean, there's no wrong notes, but like random stuff, clusters, until his brain stopped reacting. So I like that. the singer will be singing a song and then going off key and yes, not reacting, yes. which is yes. terrible. But when you stop reacting, you actually stop judging and you stop. Exactly. Yeah. It's a big confidence thing, holding a lot of people back. Because making mistakes come from lack of practice, obviously. But if there is practice, the mistakes come from, yes. Yes. oh, now I'm going to make a mistake and they're going to make a mistake. And I think so, yeah. masters of their instruments, I think, are just people that have made more mistakes and kept going. Yeah. They so failed. Answer? I think masters of their instruments are people oh, yeah. that probably just failed more, but they kept going to exactly. get to where they exactly. are. Charlie Parker is the example. They, he went to jam sessions when he was young. It was so terrible. They just throw a snare drum at him. A symbol. A, I was a symbol. A snare drum is Whiplash. It's the movie. You're right. Papa, was George, Papa, Papa Joe Jones. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. That was movie, very, yeah. It wasn't ready yet, but because of that, I, I, I don't even agree with someone throwing at you a symbol, but still. Yeah, we're not condoning that at all. Let's no, just no, no. It's not going to happen in the premises. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we don't do that at Planet Room. No, we exactly. don't. Don't we don't do that. Um amazing. I've we've really enjoyed talking to you. Um really good uh, little insights and, and tips and everything. Um we are unfortunately running out of time, so we're gonna have to leave it there. But thank you again. Um thank you. and yeah, so Filippo is one of our lovely teachers at Planet Drum. Um so if you're not a student, come and have a lesson, come and have a lesson with him um to learn a little bit more. Um, and yeah, so we're going to leave you there. But thank you ever so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon.